Finally, you can upload your own images into Midjourney and edit them using their AI. All you need to do is log into the Midjourney website and head to edit. Keeping in mind that at the time of publishing, you need to have generated at least 10,000 images to access this. However, this limit will decrease in time. But essentially, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because all we need to do is we can paste a URL in of an image to edit or we can upload one here. I'm going to drag and drop an image I downloaded from pexels.com to upload into the editor. So we have this image of a man's face and essentially we have all our tools on the left here to kind of edit with our prompt bar at the top to make our changes and a bit of information on the right of the images we generate. And of course, we have our move and resize, so in which case I can drag and move this around. I can change the aspect ratio a bit if I want to, or I can grab my erase tool and start erasing the areas I want to basically regenerate. So I'm going to erase the background. So I've erased the background and his t-shirt and maybe got a little bit heavy handed and deleted a little bit too much. So I'm going to go over here to the restore button because I can essentially add areas back in that I've erased. I can also change the brush size down here to make it smaller and fine tune what it is I've actually erased in the editor. And go back, shave a bit off here. And it doesn't have to be precise because Mid Journey will essentially regenerate a lot of the details here anyway because it's got a pretty good sort of image editing AI. So if I want to actually generate something around this now, all I need to do is head up to my prompt bar here and type in a prompt of what I want to see. I have a man with a silly face inside a spaceship cockpit hyperspace. I click Submit Edit. You can see it's generated a background, but I don't have to stick to just this image because on the right, I have my four options. I can pick the one I think looks the best. I might stick with this one. Looks like he's strapped in. So you can see by, how, by removing and erasing areas just like the uh, the image editor that was here previously, we can upload our own images and make changes with the AI. And the fact it's really referenced the highlight on his face and added that color into the background, I think has worked really well. But we can also change the aspect ratio. For, for starters, I might take this move resize and move this image over. I can change the aspect ratio here, or I can come down. I can change the image scale, although since I've generated an image, not quite, sometimes I think this works when you first import the image, but not all the time. But I can come down here to aspect ratio and change it to something like 16 to 9 or choose one of these predetermined aspect ratios. I'm going to choose 16 to 9 and I'm going to actually just enlarge this guy here, move him over. Being the first day, sometimes you get a little, a few errors. I had a few errors earlier trying to use this, but it has only just been launched. But if I want to generate some information over here now, what I might do is come back up get my eraser tool and just erase a bit more again. Because what I want to do is use suggest prompt. I'm going to click that and it's going to scare my image and suggest a prompt. You can see here it's created a prompt for me. I'm actually going to just submit that edit. And now it's generated some more images that I can check out. I really like this one with the red window, so I'll keep that. So already you can see the power of this tool just for editing. Now you don't have to just create things around objects. We can also go into this so I can say, get my eraser tool and even erase his eyes. Wipe this out completely and just type in something like cyberpunk goggles. And keep in mind, I can come to my settings here and I can change any of these settings such as I can turn on personalization. So I'll do that. I can go from six to 6.1 and I can up the stylization and weirdness, although it's kind of stuck in place. But uh, some of the options here can be changed to affect the generation. But also, I can come over here and use image prompts. So we might experiment with that in a minute, but otherwise, I'm gonna use my cyberpunk goggles, submit the edit, and I can choose which one I think looks the best. I really like this one here. The other thing too is, you'll notice we got these three stages. If I click on this left image, it takes me back to that image. So I can go through the different stages of the editor and go back and forth, pick the image I want and sort of move through my history a little bit like that also, which is pretty powerful. So this could be used for any AI image editing. I might go through a more in-depth tutorial later. However, what if I want to try an image prompt such as this gears here? Maybe I'll go for a style reference and then I'm going to just click back here and again, I'm going to get my eraser tool 
and just erase a portion of this cockpit to see if it introduces some of those gears from here as a style reference. I submit the edit and using my image, I'm able to create a style reference for that. It's probably not the best example. So I'm going to take a step back to here and go back to my goggles man. Now when I'm done, before I move on to retexture, I can upscale this to the gallery like so, or I can download this image here. So that's a pretty quick introduction for this feature, which is pretty brand new. I might go a bit deeper on it later, but you can see how easy it is to use and edit your images based off what I've uploaded. But there's also the retexture function here. And it will essentially scan the image and retexture it. So if I were to type in something here like ink dripping drawing with red, green, and black ink, I can submit the retexture. And you can see how it's taken the existing image and changed the style. But I can come back to here and even try something else, such as a Renaissance painting by Leonardo da Vinci, similar style to Mona Lisa. Submit. It's half converted him into the Mona Lisa. So understanding your prompt may have a good impact. But let's go back again, because this time we'll get rid of the prompt, create an image prompt, choose this weird effect here, make it a style reference and submit, except the prompt can't be empty. So I'm going to say digital green screen effect, hit enter. You can see we've got a few options again. And they look pretty nifty. This this one here looks a bit funky. I'm going to upscale that to the gallery. Now, when you're done, if I click on edit again over here, it will take me to this screen and I can go back into this job. But I can also see all of the recent images I've created, including different versions. So you can change the versions around, like I said before. So the fact that you can go in, organize this, download these as you want is really incredibly powerful. But also if I head back to my create tab, You'll notice it has my upscale here from before. And of course, I can use some of these other functions here, but ultimately I think this is gonna be the result that we stick with. So you can see very quickly, this new function allows you to take your own photos and edit them with Midjourney's powerful AI, which is a bit of a game changer. And the fact that you can upscale as well is also pretty handy. And then you can also retexture. So until I get a chance to go through this a bit more in depth and do a proper video, I recommend going in, having a play, checking out what we've covered today because it's going to be a pretty fun tool to play with and definitely going to be something that's going to change the way people use Midjourney in the future. Otherwise, that's the video for today, guys. Hope you found it useful. And if you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.